So to end this lecture, I'm going to have you take a look at uh, some examples of scalar conservation laws. Uh, let me see. I have the buckley leverett equation and Burgess equation here. And uh, to end in a light note, uh, let's let's try Burgess. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, I want to thank Xing for for helping me write a better version of this demo because uh, uh, last time we had a problem if somebody draw from the right to left, my code doesn't work. So so Xing helped me rewrite this to uh, to have the demo work with the right to left uh, writing too. So thank you for that. Can I ask you to draw me an initial condition of the Burgess equation? And we are going to see. Yes. Oh, let's 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 uh, cut it. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. So let's move these two windows uh, apart from each other a little bit because I'm showing two things. On the left hand side. I'm showing the evolution of the solution. So we are solving the Burgess equation, as you can see. The Burgess equation is partial u partial t plus u times partial u partial x equal to zero. So the speed of advection is the solution itself. It means the positive part of the solution greater than, z than zero moves towards the right, and the negative part of the solution moves towards the left. Right? I mean, if you if you watch closely, you can you can see like this peak was originally close to zero. It's moved over here, and this negative peak has moved towards the left. And on the right hand side, I'm showing a space-time diagram of the solution. The x-axis is space. The y-axis is actually time. What I'm showing here on the left plot is actually the most recent update of the solution. And here you can clearly see that the negative value has moved towards the left, and the positive peak has moved towards the right. And here, uh, a slightly positive solution is moving towards the right, too, at, at a slower speed. So what have you seen that is, other than that, what have you seen that is remarkable in this solution? There is a discontinuity here formed, basically because the positive region on the left moves towards the right and collide with the negative region moving towards the left, right? And that forms a discontinuity there. That is something we would never observe in linear equations. If R, everything moves towards, the, towards either left or right at the same speed, this would never happen. But because in nonlinear equations, the speed of movement actually depends on the solution itself. So different places move at different speed. That creates shock waves. We also see a small shock wave just formed over here too, also because of different movement speeds. All right. So thanks Shin, for not only giving me this, but also drawing me such a good initial condition. All right. What's the steady state solution? Good question. At very large t, what is going to be the shape? There is still it's still moving, right? On the right hand side, you can see. So, any anybody wants to take a guess on what is the final if I evolve it for ten years? What is going to be looking like? Discontinuity flat, discontinuity, that's a very good guess. Actually, that's pretty much what it is. The Burgess equation has been used to describe the propagation of uh, uh, sonic booms, like supersonic airplanes flying that creates uh, pressure waves, 
that gets propagated to the ground. The equation you can use to propagate the uh, the pressure disturbance is a lot like the Burgess equation. That's why when people hear like uh, how many people have uh, either hear or like have seen like YouTube videos or something about sonic booms. Uh, for those of you, can you kind of describe what it sounds like? Just okay. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to describe what a sonic boom sounds like? Okay. Anybody anybody here like two booms? It's actually a sonic boom is not just one boom, it's two booms. It sounds like gunshot but like two consecutive ones, like boom boom. It ends up to be flat a discontinuity, that's the first boom, and flat but like back and also a discontinuity and then to flat. It's it's like a it's like a N type of shape. So that's pretty much like the long-term evolution of the Burgess equation. And you're going to see this is pretty much like approaching that, right? I mean, we get a, we get a discontinuity there. There is another discontinuity there. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. All right. Any other questions? Any other things remarkable in the solution? The magnitude is decreasing, so it'll be zero at the end. That's a very good point. Shock waves is dissipative. Shock waves they don't keep energy. I mean, the, the, if you if you are into physics, uh, the mechanism of uh, shock waves is that the properties change so much during so little space that like molecular diffusion really plays a dominant role within the shock wave and it basically dissipates kinetic energy into internal energy of the of the flow so if you look in the macroscopic level shock waves are very dissipative it kind of removes macroscopic energy from the uh increases entropy so the 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 size of the shock wave is going to decrease unless you fit it with uh, some kind of uh, uh energy and it will ultimately go flat, that's right. Okay, there are also a lot of interesting things like all these straight lines, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by dominated by? I mean the shape just keep being pushed towards moving towards the left. It's initially kind of going straight and uh, maybe slightly towards the right and gets pushed towards the left. That's a very good point. Why does it why does it curve? So it's unlike all the other contours on this, which looks like straight. The shock wave curves. Right, so why is that the case? It turns out we are going to do uh, in the beginning of next lecture analysis of first of all why these are straight lines, what are the speed, what are the slope of these lines, and two, what is the slope of the discontinuity? Actually, they follow different dynamics, and uh, I'm going to say a little bit on this particular case. It's because this dark, this lower region is flatter. They have like bigger, they, they are they are flatter than this peaky positive area. That's what keeps the shock wave to be turning towards the left because uh, the the values i mean if you if you look at here the blue region keeps colliding to the shock wave but it stays very negative and on the positive region also the positive collides into the shock wave but like uh, the magnitude decreases pretty fast because it's pretty picky right so so the speed of the shock wave is in this case it's like the average of the speed of the left hand side and right hand side because the left hand side decays fast, 
it become more and more like the speed of the right hand side. All right, I think I used uh, more than my time here. So I will see you next Monday to keep discussing scalar conservation laws, their behavior, and how to solve them using finite volume.